really, really excited and I'm very, very passionate about this subject. Uh, I am no expert by any means. Uh, I don't have any special degrees. Um, nobody's giving me any special powers to do this. I just enjoy it and I'm very passionate about it. And I've had success. I'm going to put that in big quotes. Success is relative. I've never had a viral video hit a million views. Not it's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be great exposure, but that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. I want to use social media to grow my chapter as much as I can. When I started with my chapter, our social media presence was very, very slow and very uh, <coughs> sporadic, and there was no rhyme or reason to it. I had some ideas, and the guys in my chapter said, it's all yours. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I came up with my own code, my own standards that I, was, that I wanted to do, and we're going to talk a lot about that stuff today. Uh, the things I'm telling you are just my experience. Other people will tell you that something else has worked for them, and that's totally cool. Everyone's going to have a different experience. And each chapter is going to be in a different area, so experiences are not going to be the same. But I've had success. What do I mean by success? I was able to find new people to join our chapter. I was able to find new people to expose to barbershop. I was able to make connections within my community to get involved with things that we normally wouldn't have been involved in. Come on in, Joe. There's two empty chairs right here. I'm looking for Rob. I don't know where Rob is. So that's what I mean by success. So if you're interested in bringing new people to your chapter, if you're interested in being a part of your community, and if you're interested in growing in a way that maybe you haven't before, this may work for you. Most of this stuff is free, except it's cost you time. So there is a cost associated with it. And if you want to spend money on this, you can. But none of the things are going to demand money of you. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, what is social media? We're going to get into that. How can it benefit from my group? I talked about three things a second ago. What do I need to get started? Uh, how do we work together online? And I think that's another big piece that we're missing, not just Pioneer, but Barbershop as a whole, is supporting each other online in just a few different ways that we'll talk about. Uh, how to make social media your ally and how to be unique are some of the things we're going to go over. And why should you even listen to me? I kind of talked about that for a brief second, um, but I'm self-taught and I'm, I care about this topic. So that's why I am here. And when they asked me if I wanted to do this, I jumped at the opportunity and said, yes, oh, I would love for more people to be involved in this. So the things that you're going to learn today, I'm not saying that you have to do it. Maybe there's somebody that's a better fit within your chapter. Maybe you're a chapter leader or you're in charge of your marketing or public relations or something. Get in touch with those people, maybe motivate some people or a team or a committee who want to take this on. Because I do all of it on mine, but you can't stop me. Like, I just keep going, and I'm, I'm very excited about this topic. So not every chapter is going to have something like that, but the benefits here are worth it, I promise. Uh, this is a review from uh, the Morse Music Men out in New Jersey. Uh, I asked Nate if he would write a review, so I copied and pasted what he said, but Eddie's social media tactics are incredible. Thanks to his suggestion, we were able to get over 30 guys to participate in our Ready, Set, Sing program, which led to over a dozen new members. If you're serious about growing your chapter and your research, in your reach, do exactly what he says. So I thanked him very much, but it was genuine. Uh, he had called me and said, I have $5,000 that I have to spend. How do I do it? I said, do this and do this and do this. And that was his result, and I think everybody would love 30 new people at a guest night and uh, a dozen new members of your course. All right, time to warm up. We're not gonna actually do any singing. Did anybody not get one of these flyers? Pass them over that way. This is a QR code on here. If you want a copy of this presentation, all you gotta do is scan that with your phone and it should pull up a link. That link's gonna ask you two questions. Do you want a copy of social media, the music medics, or both? And then give me your email and I'll send it to you when I get a chance. So please do that when you get a chance and I'll be happy to send you this and you can share it with your chapter, etc. All right, what is social media? It's an online platform that brings people together to create and share. You can share ideas, information, announcements, entertainment, and so, so much more. Uh, and what you do with it can be very unique. You can combine all of these things into one post. You can use social media in whatever way that you can imagine. So these are some of the different ones that we're going to talk about. You may recognize some of those. Uh, this is a quote from Joelle, uh, the power of the online aspect, but 
She found out about Barbershop from someone sending uh, her a song online. Almost immediately, she searched Google for a course near her. She found their website, and on their site, it made it obvious they were fun, meeting regularly, and very open to new members. It was very easy for her to contact them to visit, and within a few weeks, she joined. Uh, and she brought this up because websites are important, and I think a lot of people don't realize the impact it can really make. So even if she's just one person, her love of Barbershop has gotten more people involved and uh, those are the results that we're all looking for. It is so common for me to run into people that send us messages, emails, comments, likes at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight, 1, 2, 3 a.m. She happened to be a midnight hour person. So if you don't have a website or an online presence and you have just a phone number, no one's going to be answering that phone number, but people nowadays are looking for a quick way to find information about a chapter. And if you're not existing online, they won't find you. And so many people have found me because I'm findable. You search and you can find me. Other courses aren't like that. So it's an opportunity for you to raise awareness in a new way, which can help out in so many different ways. Um, so do you have a chapter website? I suggest what you do if you do is you pretend I'm a brand new person coming to this website and I want to know about rehearsals. How hard is it for you to navigate to that spot? If it's difficult, maybe think of reorganizing your website or you're putting a link right there front and center. Because that's really what you're looking for is for people to find information on you easily. Um, how updated is it? You know, did you update it when COVID happened? Did you update it? Recently, maybe things have changed, rehearsal location. If you have false information on there, you may have a dead end, and somebody who runs into a dead end is gonna be frustrated and they're gonna stop. So just double check that stuff. And if you don't have a website, you can use other social media platforms as a website. There's all kinds of ways to do that with a Google platform. Google has uh, docs, so you can put learning tracks and other things on there. Um, and you can, you can share resources that way. And just make sure your social media has the information that people will be looking for, the who, what, where, when, and why. Um, does your chapter's personality shine in the context of your website? You may not want to look like the, um, what's a good example? I see people sharing Tim Work videos, which are fantastic, but does your course sound like that? Probably not. It's okay to have something that is polished for you and to showcase and say, this is who we are. Maybe a song that Polecat, a song that your group really enjoys doing, but creating some kind of media that's front and center that lets somebody know that this is the kind of group that I'm looking for. Not intimidating, fun, but don't necessarily use other people's um, media to represent yourself because Ambassadors of Harmony is not going to be like whatever your chorus is locally. Um, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, uh, but you can embed videos. So YouTube's a great place to do that, and we'll talk about YouTube here. Uh, but Barbershop's meant to be heard, so pictures can only do so much. You know, there's a great picture of you guys on the contest stage doing this, but nobody can hear that. So make sure that you come up with some of those types of things along the way. All right, how can an online presence benefit you at rehearsals and shows? <coughs> Mailing lists? still work to an extent, but this is like a modern mailing list. When you send something out to followers, they're already following you, so they'll get that information in a new way that's not just another email that may go to their junk or something they just delete because they don't care about it. It's showing up on social media, which is something they're doing in their free time and they want to be exposed to. I don't love emails, so I try to make that analogy. More eyeballs on you will lead to even more eyeballs on you. So if somebody, you make a, a decent post, it may get shared. And then their followers see it. And it may get shared from there. And it's got the opportunity to get passed around. So the opportunity is there. And there's all kinds of different ways that your post can bring you even more eyeballs just by one person seeing it. Uh, awareness of you is the key to more fill in the blank. What are you looking to do with your, with your chapter? Um, if people are aware of you, you may be able to accelerate those things that you're trying to do um, on a daily, weekly, yearly basis. It improves your alive and well. Unfortunately, I visited just about everybody's group in the Pioneer District, 
And some of you do not appear to be alive and well uh, from an online standpoint. Uh, it's sometimes confusing or difficult to locate information that should be simple and readily available. So when somebody's looking, if they see if their last post was 2019, it's logical to believe that maybe you died during COVID and that the chapter no longer exists. I'm not going to go look into an organization from four years ago. But if I see something from March of 2023, April of 2023, I know that you're alive and well. So that's something that is, is easy to do. Uh, creates a community online, which is, I think, something that we're all trying to do is be a part of a greater community. Uh, the community can be your local community of people that are in your general area. It can be the Pioneer District. It can be the Barbershop Harmony Society. It can be the entire world. Uh, it just depends on what you're looking to do. And the work you put in will lead to more guests at rehearsals and more attendance at your concerts. That is my experience. And it shows that you're a fun group worth visiting, which I think at the end of the day, why we're all here is this is fun. And you should try to make sure that people recognize that when they look at your stuff online. The times have changed. This is the wave of the future. This is, the future is now. I've already revised this in the last uh, week because things have changed since I wrote it, what, two months ago? Uh, trends are changing, platforms are changing, there's always something new. It's really hard to stay on top of, but I'm going to talk about some of the high level stuff that you should do immediately. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time in here because i got a slide for each one. Facebook and Facebook Messenger are probably the number one thing that you should grab. It's probably the most used platform. It's also replacing websites for a lot of different groups. Um, I follow, I am passionate about social media. I follow people that stay on top of social media trends. And they said there's the top three right now, Facebook, um, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok. I'm not expecting you to go on TikTok. That's, that's another world. But Facebook and Messenger are wonderful resources. Facebook is very easy to put any kind of platform that you want on there. You can create events, which is I think is a huge, huge, huge benefit. I can talk about more on that. Um, but it's follower-based, which is a problem. If you only have 100 followers, you're only going to be reaching 100 people each time you post. But if those people share, it's, it's, the compound is endless potentially. Um, but you can gain followers along the way. And Facebook now has a thing called Reels. And Reels are not follower-based. So you, you might see a video that is something that uh, can go out to the general world regardless if they follow you or not. And you have potential to gain new followers that way. It's interesting and people like it. Um, it's fairly intuitive, which I know is, plays a big part in the social media world because it's intimidating. Um, but it allows you to post media types like links, photos, videos, there's groups, that's an option. And within groups you can do polls, which I think is really helpful. Uh, comments and GIFs, really you can post anything on there. You can go live on Facebook, which I think is an awesome feature. And Messenger is a way to communicate with people in real time, similar to texting. Uh, you can take a widget, um, and that might be getting deep for some people, but it's basically putting Messenger on your, fa on your website and somebody could talk to you on your website using Messenger, which would just be a message right back to you, which is a pretty cool feature, and all of that is absolutely free. I think this is the number one thing. If you do not have a Facebook and or use Messenger, this is the one to go get. If you have to circle one thing after this class, just get a Facebook page. That's the question people ask. That's where they look. It's easy to find and it's very searchable. Next one. Has anybody here heard of Meetup? Mm -hmm. One hand, two hands, three, four, five. This is the number two thing to go and get right now. Meetup is awesome. What is Meetup? Meetup is a platform for people out in the world to find things that are happening that they're looking for. They're looking for events, something to be a part of. That's the whole point of Meetup. My chapter has had in four or five new members, and they were all under the age of 40. Pretty cool. These people came, they found us, they found the event, they showed up, they liked it, they stayed. I think that's what we're looking for. It is subscription-based, though. It does cost you money to use this, which actually works in your benefit, because not everybody can throw stuff onto this platform. 
It's based on a region that they can specify. So if they said Grand Rapids, Michigan, they can find things that are going on in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And if they're serious, well, they wouldn't be using it if they weren't serious, but they're looking for a place to sing, they find you, they show up. And you can message with them on that platform as well. This one has been really successful. It's more of the long game, though. It's kind of nice because you can set it and almost forget it. You don't have to update it daily. You can get alerts when you get messages from people or when someone RSVPs to your event. Pretty cool. The people in the real world don't pay a dime to use this thing either. It's all of the people that are creating the events online that pay for it. So the second you stop paying, you don't have any more events online. We've been using it for a couple years and I have zero plans to remove this from our, um, our annual budget because it's very effective. Yep, you can create one event and you can make it a reoccurring. You can jump on there and say we've got a show. You can jump on there and say we've got a particular guest night. We use, we use it as a guest night every Tuesday style approach and we have a, a picture that says wanted men who like to sing. And so we find people that way. So once the event is passed, it drops off? Yep, that one drops off and the next one is front and center. There's two levels to meet up. There's the uh, primary and then there's the premium. The premium will just make you more searchable. But we started with this, love the success, upgraded to the premium. So you don't have, uh, it's like, I'm not positive on it because it changes, but call it a hundred bucks for six months. Okay. Do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. I think this is the number two thing to go and grab right now. You said you can try the free version though? There is no free There's version. No the free, free version, version is only for people in the, in the world <coughs> looking to participate in events. I see, but the organizers have to pay. Organizers have to pay. So if you stop paying, your events fall off. So it may be worth it to just try it for six months and see what happens. Instagram. Instagram is a, uh, we'll call it a, a brother or sister of Facebook. Instagram is independent, got bought out by Facebook. You can post to Instagram and it will also post to Facebook. So you can post one time to two platforms, which is a really nice feature. Um, it is also follower based, but Instagram has reels and those are not follower based. Uh, but it pairs really well and uh, I'll use my buddies out in uh, New Jersey again, the Morris Music Men. They have success on Instagram that I don't. They post something that gets 150 likes. I post something that gets like 15. It's just a different area, different places use it differently. So that's why I'm suggesting that you could potentially take all of these and try them out. <coughs> Next is TikTok. I highlighted in red, must be creative. <laughs> it is a wonderful place to search though. You don't have to necessarily be someone who's creating content on there, but you can get a lot of really good ideas from other people and say, that's a cool idea. I'm going to spin this my own way. Uh, but TikTok is the number three. That uh, is, is the, the number three social media platform right now. It is not all the bad things you may have heard about in the news recently. It is a wonderful community. That guy right there, I met him through TikTok, and I found I'm him sorry. because I was watching barbershop. <laughs> I was watching barbershop style videos, and his stuff came up. And I think he found us the same way. And uh, you can create a really cool community online based on that. But this is not for everybody. Facebook is the number one you should get. I wouldn't worry about this one yet. Twitter, I don't really use Twitter that much anymore. It has not worked for me personally. Um, but you can post to Twitter and have it go elsewhere, which is kind of nice. It's a great secondary platform. Um, it doesn't do videos quite like the other platforms do, but it can be used for news if you have people that are following you on there. Uh, but I wouldn't suggest, based on my experience, putting a lot into Twitter. Well, I found Instagram, you can cross post to Twitter and Facebook. Yes. And Tumblr. Yes, you can <laughs> post onto one and have it boop, 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 go to other ones. Mm. YouTube, YouTube's a big one for me because you can do, the easiest way I was explaining it to Charles the other day, there's videos that look like this, and then there's videos that look like this. These are the videos that you can easily embed onto your website. You can post a video that you're proud of onto YouTube, and you can send that out as a link. If you use uh, Gmail, the video can play within the email, which is a really nice feature. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to YouTube, and is the most easily searched engine of all the social media sites. So if somebody's looking for uh, barbershop singers, 
it pulls up really good results that make sense. And they spend a lot of time making that possible. YouTube is a very nice feature. And they also have a new thing called YouTube Shorts, which is just like Reels for the other platforms. Those are the videos that are like this, not like this. So there's two ways to post on the YouTube. But I strongly suggest getting one. Does YouTube have a local, uh, the searches, they're pretty much? Yeah, I mean, you can search like Grand Rapids Barbershop or Grand Rapids Singers. And as long as you've got something in there that references that, then you have, you have to make sure that you've got content within there that tells them something. So there's value in putting good descriptions on there. So always starting with like the Harmony Town Chorus in Wayne, Michigan, singing this song by this person and giving the search engine an opportunity to have things to find in relation to it. That's a really good question. You can do, you can do tags in YouTube too. Yep. But it's, the, the strongest thing is make sure your title is very distinctive. Mm -hmm. Patch is a, uh, it's city based. So it doesn't have every single city in the world, but it might be something worth trying. Uh, it's news and event driven, and it's with regionalized me uh, media. So uh, I did not have a lot of success on Patch personally, but that doesn't mean other people have not. Uh, it's, it is free to jump on and do that. And like I said, it's, it's local, so it's a good thing to pair up with. Is that an app or is it both? Too? It's both. both. Yeah. Next door is neighborhood-based. So you'd be literally communicating with your neighbors. I found it is somewhat a place to complain or uh, spy on people. Uh, but your experience may be different than mine, and I wanted to at least mention it because it, it is so... Yeah, there's a, it's, it's a small radius around you, and that is your audience, which, how can you ignore that? <clears throat> LinkedIn, you may want to use this if you're looking for uh, a director, by chance. That would be a good place to do this, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time on here yourself, unless you already have a LinkedIn. Maybe you mentioned that you are a barber shopper, and that might spark a conversation that may not have happened otherwise. Tumblr, I'm not going to spend much time here, but people that like it, uh, it's for blogging. So you may enjoy it as an individual, but I wouldn't recommend that your chapter jump into it. All right, getting into this stuff. What should I post? Uh, this class is not going to show you how to go online and post. I want to talk more about what you should be posting. And I think the biggest thing is that you should be true to who you are. If you're a competition course, show off those technical skills. Show that you're doing all those things. If you're a community-based course that enjoys getting out, find content and create content that's related to that. Show you singing in a place that people would recognize. Uh, and make it engaging somehow. Pose a question like, who's got the best dance moves? If you got a video of you guys you kind of moving around, give them something to engage in. I've had, I've had experiences where I loved a video. I thought it was the best thing I ever created. I threw it out there, and there's nothing. And then I looked at it through a new set of eyes, and I said, what am I actually seeing people to do here? Nothing. I did that. I took your advice. I was looking for this. And I posted just yesterday the program here. By the way, if you want to learn Facebook, we have a program there or a website. And I was just going to post it. And I went, let me ask a question. And I said, what are you looking forward to the most? So many comments. Yeah. So much engagement. So many more likes. I actually noticed that too. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, she tried a different approach, uh -huh. and it's successful. People are engaging, which is what you're looking for. Uh, but make it engaging somehow to provoke some kind of response. Uh, be insightful. If you have news to share, like maybe the history of a song. I know barbershoppers love to talk about origins of things. That might be something to, to add. Uh, is this something that you're posting that's a new song that you're working on? Is this an old tried and true, one of your favorites? Give something. And maybe even tag the people that are singing in it, if they're OK with that. Uh, make sure the subjects are OK with that sort of thing, too. So we had a conversation with my chapter when we first got started. Just, hey, if anybody's not OK with this, let me know. And I will make it so you're limited within this. But I'm not trying to make anybody uncomfortable. But everybody appeals to somebody differently than I do. So I want to get our, our group shared as much as possible. Um, be honest and be responsive. You know, when somebody leaves a comment, engage with them. If somebody says like, wow, you guys sounded great, it's okay to say thanks. You know, or really appreciate the feedback, or we'll keep it coming. Engage with them somehow, because then they'll feel like there's a, a sense of community, or more of a conversation. Um, keep it fresh. 
It's okay to post something from the archives, but don't make that your identity. Talking about how great the 80s were and showing videos that are old and granular. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, look at other people's posts. Steal stuff from me. I'll steal stuff from him. And he probably stole from somebody else. You know, you take an idea and then you take that idea and you mold it into something that makes sense for you. And that's what I mean by look at other people's group or other groups' posts and imitate them. Totally okay. There's no copyright on a good idea online. So have fun exploring. Uh, but don't aim for perfection. Don't try to get every single chord to lock perfectly or I'm not going to post the video. Otherwise, I'd have no content at all. <laughs> My stuff's good enough, and that's what I'm okay with. Does this offend anybody? Do I represent my people well? Is this what they sound like? Then I'm going to post it. But if they had an off night, I'm not going to use that. If I look back and go, Ugh, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody when I'm posting things. Be careful of length. It may be better to just cut a video down to the chorus. Hey, hello, Mary Lou. Just get that part rather than the entire two and a half minute long song. Unless you did really good with the two and a half minute long song, then maybe post that on YouTube. But if not, just maybe shorten it down and just use it so it's a quick 30 second video for somebody to enjoy. Uh, and then that leads into get familiar with editing tools, how to crop your photos, how to add a logo, add a sticker. Um, those are really good things to add. And don't be afraid to create events for people to find out about. If you see an event, you know it's official. You know where, when, who's coming, the, the description. But if you just put that in the context of a post, it gets buried. So events stay alive and they, they show up in a different area uh, like on Facebook. And then QR codes. I put a QR code on here. Pretty easy to use. You scan it, you follow it to the website. If you're creating any kind of flyers in the real world and you're handing them out to people, put a QR code on there that takes them to your Facebook page if you want to get more exposure to it. How do you create a QR code? I have no clue. I can definitely help you with that. Uh, there are, if you type in free QR code online, you can do it that way. There's a bunch of different ways. This one I know is very small because it's normally much bigger, but I have my Harmony Town logo on it, which makes it unique there. You'll notice on that one I don't have a logo on it. something like that, you know you're not going to run into an ex expired QR code at that point. No, because it should be generating, it's like generating a visual code. Right, yeah. Right, so the code is always going to be that link. If they're saying you need to pay for it, then they're going to play for it. So this page is more of me patting you on the back and saying it's going to be all right, but who's intimidated by social media? All right, when I first started, I wasn't, because I was king of the world, and I said, watch me go. <laughs> and then I took a step back after I was like, there's some cringe-worthy moments on there that are not as good as I hoped they would be. And now I'm intimidated by social media, because the deeper you get, the more you find people that are just so much better at it than you. But don't. Your results will vary. If you end up doing a post, and you get one more person to your concert, or if you get one more person to rehearsal, that is success. And if you don't, that's okay too, keep trying. You want to interact with those that show interest, but if you're not getting interactions, don't let that be your, this isn't gonna work. I've had lots of failures, and I'm starting to have success more often, but like I said, I'm not gonna claim that I'm the, the king of social media, I just have experience in it. Um, but engage with other barbershop groups and individuals. Uh, anybody from Capital City here? Well, you guys are doing new things. I can tell there's somebody out there who is sharing the other posts, sharing the Pioneer posts, sharing posts that I create, sharing just uh, in general <clears throat> stuff. And it shows for the person who created it that, hey, somebody watched and thought it was worthy of sharing. How cool. So it's, it's, it's a great community to be a part of. But right now, the participation is so low, in my opinion, that it could be so much better that we could be helping each other out. 
Uh, but build off of what works and learn from what doesn't. Create something and say, that didn't do so well, why? Look at it and try to figure out a couple questions. My information's at the end of this, I'll be happy to look at it and be like, I thought this was great, what's wrong with it? And I'll say like, it's from a weird angle, like nobody can hear it. The, the audio, only you can only hear the tenor. Like it's just kind of awkward watching it. Um, so maybe you won't have every answer, but don't be afraid to ask somebody, what do you think of this? And, and then just learn from it. Create something better the next time. Um, creating unique material can be hard, especially your very first one. So just start taking pictures and videos of everything. My phone has pictures of dogs, my kids, uh, and then like barbershop sprinkled in everywhere else. And at the end of a Tuesday night, I throw it into a folder that I've created on my phone so that material all stays together and then I create stuff from there. Um, but don't be afraid to get videos and photos. A lot of videos, you can take a video if you're using your phone and you can take pictures while you're taking the video, which is kind of a cool feature. Or like Joelle's got her camera right here. You know, don't be afraid to set it there and then run out there and then edit yourself out from, you know, walking over here and then the video just starts with you over here. Again, create events. And you can get added as a co-host. So let's say you have a local, um, local VFW hall that's hosting an event. You see that they put it on Facebook as an event. You're singing at it. Ask them to add you as a co-host. It'll show up on your calendar, and it shows that partnership. And maybe somebody who's interested in working more with veterans might say, that's cool, and I didn't know about that. Uh, and you can add people as a co-host to your events as well, which is a really nice feature. But don't be discouraged no matter what happens. Keep trying. It worked for me but it didn't work immediately for me. I didn't just say, I'm gonna do social media, my first post got 10 people inside the door. It was a work, a slow build up. Here's some post examples, uh, and I wanna share with you why I like them. They're all ones that I created, but why I like these particular ones. So we actually spent money on this one and promoted it. You guys ever sing along the tone of your lawnmower, your snowblower, your power tools, you're our kind of guy. You know, going with the blue collar aspect. That was uh, that had some good success for us. And then I mentioned this before, but this is the one that we have on Meetup right now. Wanted, men who like to sing. Bright colors, there's our logo. It's clear as to what somebody is expecting. If they see this, they're not gonna think I'm, that's for me fairly clear. And that was a recent photo of us when we uh, created this, and that was a picture from November. So these are bright colors. And I think that they're they're fairly clear in their message. When you deployed those, were they links sending people to the website? No, they were events. I made them the pictures for events and then used it that way, which was uh, which was helpful because when you promote an event, and I'm not going to get into that here, but you can create an event and then you can financially promote it. So you can say, I want to spend hundred dollars over the next two weeks to reach people in this radius. Actually, I do talk about it a little bit further. But you can say, I want to spend 100 bucks and see people within a 10 mile radius around our rehearsal location. And then that event will show up on their feed over and over and over again, and you can actually watch the results. If you like data, if you like analytics, you'll get very excited about that. So they'll show you the demographic of the people, they can show you where they are, their age group, and you can target an age group. You can say 18 to 75 plus, or you can say like, I want 40 to 50 year olds, I want men and women, I want women only, I want men only. And you can even filter it down to keywords, like they have to like singing. I try not to use that kind of stuff though, like they have to like singing because I don't even have that I like singing on my profile. Like it's a box that you have to check. So you don't want to necessarily limit it. Yeah. So this is your meetup? You, you Both of these, I, this, this, this is the one I used on meetup. Okay. I also used it on Facebook. You can make one nice picture in multi-use right. for sure. This one I only did on Facebook. If you notice the size is different, it worked better on your phone as a square right here with the data below it. This one worked better for Meetup because it already did that, plat that, that style. That was the size photo that you had to upload. All right, I want to show a couple post examples of videos to maybe inspire you. These are not high quality or took me a lot of work to do, but this first one, we were doing a board meeting at a campfire, and I said, I have an idea, will you guys follow me on it? And I actually have one of the guys, Paul, was at that board meeting with me, and uh, actually Charles is here too. 
So they're in this one, and please enjoy. Oh, hold on, I gotta pause it. I need. Sorry, I didn't have my volume on. Here we go. And now it's not working. Hi, I'm Mark, and I sing with the Harmony Town Chorus. I tell everybody that the reason that I sing Barbershop is because it keeps my blood pressure down. But the truth of the matter is that singing will bring joy into your life. Come join us and find that out. Hi, I'm Dennis, and I like singing with Harmony Town. The reason I like coming to sing is because, I don't know, when, when you just start singing, I used to sing in the car, but now I sing with these guys, and it's weird and it's wonderful when you open your mouth and start singing lens with those around you you're like, whoa, that's fantastic. It just gets you going. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Harmony is fun. I came from the seven chords and the tight harmonies. The power of music is magnified tenfold when you are in a group of men and people who share a love of music. And the power of the stories that we tell in our music can sometimes change a life. Not just the audience, but ours too. I used to sing a lot. I sang a lot in high school, I sang in college, and then when that time was over, I stopped singing. So that's just one video. I didn't let anybody script it. I went right up to Paul and said, why do you sing with us? And I just held the camera in his face. And I did the same thing with Charles. So you see there was a different set of responses. Mark is a guy who likes to talk and likes to elaborate his words. Paul's a little bit more of a short and sweet kind of guy. Same with Charles, which is okay. I wanted to capture each one of their personalities in that. That didn't take me more than a couple minutes to make, just walk around each person and asking that, and then I used a video editor where I just cut off the front, cut off the back, and just got the, the good stuff, and then just lined them up together and threw that out there, but it's very sincere. The second one, I used a face filter. I didn't tell anybody I used a face filter, I just went up and asked them a question, and the face filter makes them look like they're crying. So I just thought it was, it was very fun, but they had no idea, and you'll hear me laughing in the video too. Barbershop. This one. <laughs> <laughs> singing barbershop. Oh man, I love singing barbershop all the time. I love it. <laughs> oh. It's without measure. It's without cold. <laughs> I love barbershop. She loves barbershop. I love it, man. It's just my week. I love singing barbershop. <laughs> she loves barbershop. <laughs> Alyssa loves barbershop? Yes. Uh, my grandson would say this much, but I'd say this much. You love barbershop? Well, it's a, it's a great hobby to get into, but there's one thing. I wish I could see that. You love barbershop. I love it. An 11 on a scale of 1 to 10. You love barbershop. I love it. How much do you love barbershop? It means the world to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> So that's an idea that's out of the box, just going a different direction, but don't tell them you're putting a face filter on them and then just have some fun with the video afterwards. There was no, you can obviously tell there was much different direction with the first video than the second video. I have nothing but fun intentions on the second one, and then the first one I wanted to inspire. So what was the response to that? Uh, the first one, I, uh, second, one. second one. Second one, it, was, it just got a bunch of uh, laughs and likes. That was about it, which is all I was looking for. I'm always trying to put new content out there that hits a bunch of different spectrums. So it's not just the same thing over and over again, but I try to, I try to do that on a weekly basis for ourselves. If I were a guy looking to sing, I'm on your Facebook page, I would sing. That's a fun voice, that's funny. And that's, that that's, fun. that's what I'm trying to, to make it look like. All right, so here's a couple more pictures with less editing. I like these pictures because I saw the guys standing there and thought, you guys are brightly colored, 
and looking great. So I snapped a picture and I said, wave hi to the camera. And that's what I got. But it's a bunch of guys who are smiling and having a good time. And the picture itself is very vibrant and very appealing to look at versus a bunch of guys wearing blues, browns, and blacks who are just sitting there like, you know, the, a, that's a very genuine smile. And that was actually us on a stage uh, performing to a group. And then the second picture was more staged. I saw all these, we were in a hospital singing for our music medics program, and I thought, this is a great scene to get a picture in front of. So uh, when you see those moments, maybe it's, and it, it's awkward at first, but say, stop, 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 stop. Stand right here. And these guys will tell you, oh, there's Dave. He's one of our new guys. I've made him do all kinds of new stuff. Just like, this is what I want. Stand right there, do this, do that. Charles, I made do it. All of these guys in my group are used to it now. But it was weird at first saying, like, stop and do this. Stop and, if you ask for a group photo, this is another thing to think about. What are the guys going to do? What are your people going to do? They're all going to stand shoulder to shoulder in one big, giant, long line. Tell them to layer, like this picture. This picture is engaging because Bruce is down like this. Falls at a different level. You know, we got a whole bunch of different stuff going on. It makes it a more fun picture to see versus just a bunch of people standing there, very official looking. And then memes. Memes are a really fun way to make fun of yourself. But there's a picture of Dennis. Just caught him. That was not the point of the picture. It was not a picture of Dennis. But I noticed he had a funny face. And then we turned it into a meme and he realized the, pump, or the baritones ate all the pumpkin pie. And then we were trying to go outside of ourselves. And I took Mike Rowe from Convention uh, International a couple years ago, where he was singing with the champs. And we said, Mike Rowe sings Barbershop. Be like Mike, because Mike's well known and he's a, a lifetime Barbershop Harmony Society member. But memes are a fun way to, uh, to create unique posts without having to dig too deep. So if you're interested in doing this, I gave homework and goals, and that's on the piece of paper that I handed out to almost everybody. And if you didn't get one, I'll hand you one at the end. Um, but I want you to find out how many followers or page likes you have for your existing social media platforms. Because your goal is going to be to find a number and date. So if you have 100 followers, say I want to get to 150 followers in six months, or put a month, date, and year behind it. I've been able to reach all the goals that I set, but I keep them modest as well. I want to grow by 100 followers on Facebook each year. And right now, I've done that successfully each year, little by little by little. Um, but start at least one new platform. Go into an, an uncomfortable situation and say like, I don't know what Instagram is, but I'm gonna do it. Because if you're not on there, you're not gonna find different people. You gotta do something new to get new results. Um, and then invite your chapter to like and follow your social media platforms. If you don't have your people liking your stuff, that's a great place to start and to grow. Is like, hey guys, here's how to do it. And at the end of this presentation, I have it all mapped out and how to do that. So you can just click a few things and invite everybody. Identify who will own the platform and who will support. So say, if you're in this class, you said, I want to do this, I'm going to own it, and I'm going to have somebody as my secondary who's going to back me up. They can back you up with sending you pictures and videos. Just some way to, to get more people than just yourself on board. Um, and then you yourself need to go out on social media and five, find five barbershop groups, any ones you want, I don't care, but make sure they're in your area or they're well known, something you can relate to, and like them, and see what they're doing. Because if they're on there, I bet you they're going to have different things that they're doing that you might be able to get inspired by. Um, expand by liking or having your existing friend base to like and follow your stuff, and then engage in posts from other groups. A quick like, a quick comment, a GIF, uh, share their stuff. If you do these things, we're gonna start creating a new culture online together. It's really hard when it's me and Paul back and forth to each other, uh, unless people like watching us talk to each other online, which is cool that that is. It's a lot more fun when more people are involved. So if you're interested, I would suggest doing these things that don't cost any money, but do cost a little bit of time. These are tips you can start using today. Um, a lot of these I've mentioned already, but these are all important. Always be capturing content. You better believe I'm going to be capturing content from this convention in my group. There's a 
picture taken of my group when we're done singing. You better believe I'm going to get that. Because I can't take that nice of a picture with us all dressed up, standing there on risers, doing whatever we're doing. That's just a picture I don't normally get. So I want to get that myself. But after this, I'm making, I have an idea to make, remember those old Mentos commercials? They're really super cheesy. I'm making a video inspired by Mentos. So I'm mean, very excited. But I've got a list that's always ready for me, because this is something I love doing. These are all ideas that I haven't done yet. And when they come to me, I capture it, and when a moment is available for me to make that content, I take it. So, if you don't have, um, if you don't have content saved, you'll never be able to make something later when you have a convenient moment, like maybe you know you've had dinner and you're sitting at the couch and you normally watch the TV, and you like pull out your phone, and you're like, oh yeah, I got that really good picture of us. I should post it. But if you don't have that picture, the moment will pass you by. And you go, we were just out in a sing-out today, and that was really fun. So get in the habit of getting the camera out, whatever camera you happen to have, or encouraging somebody else to say, hey, will you take this video of us? And get comfortable with asking people, because nobody ever says no. Everybody is always willing to help out. I, I, you know, this conversation is just spot on to what I was, I told you on the phone the other day, I was going to talk, just bring up briefly, but, um, and I'm Michael Sobel from, I'm president of the Kalamazoo chapter. And shame on me that I just became aware of this within the last month, especially because I, most of my career was in media and television in New York, Los Angeles. And yet, in uh, Kalamazoo, there's an organization called the Public Media Network. And it is, a, in addition to doing all of the, like, the public access stuff where they cover the city council and so on and so forth, I'm, I'm volunteering there. Um, as, as an example, I've been with them about three weeks, just going in once or twice a week. They said, you want to take the camera with you? Because we were doing a, a rehearsal, last rehearsal before the show. I said, really? Yeah. So they gave me one of these $6,000 JVC cameras and a, I think a $1,000 Italian <laughs> uh, uh, tripod. And I recorded the whole rehearsal, okay? Which I now have on my laptop. And so we can look at it. It's a little late because the timing was not perfect. But my point is that this is available in many cities around Michigan and elsewhere. There's a website you might want to write down called allcommunitymedia.org. And if you punch in your zip code, you'll find the something similar in your town. I mean, I gave Doug Weaver uh, one that I printed out for the Grand Rapids Community Media Center, I think it was called. But basically the same. I mean, there's probably some differences here and there. And, of course, it, you know, it produces a, a, a professional picture. I mean, I mean, these things do great, amazing pictures, but this is even better. And I've already decided that... Um, I'm going to bring it over. We're singing at a at a at a, um, a senior center on Tuesday night, and I'm going to bring it over there, and I'm going to record us singing. I got a gal in Kalamazoo, and I'm going to stick that on our website as kind of an introduction because that's a song that people know, especially people in Kalamazoo know. You know, Academy Award nominated in 19. 42, if any of you were watching the Oscars that night. Uh, but, um, so anyway, I'm just, it's something you might want to look into because there's, and, and my ultimate goal, and this is my new life now that I've hit 80 years of age, it's my, it's my second life is going to be a, a television director, producer. So, all right, and I'm gonna. Uh, my, my hope is to create like a, maybe a 30 minute documentary about the Kalamazoo course, 82 years, and we have wonderful um, uh, stuff, you know, uh, programs from shows in 1947 and things like that. So I'm gonna try to meld it all together. But it's just something you might want to look into in your market, um, because it, and there's no cost. I mean, we're not as a nonprofit, and they're nonprofit, and um, 
And uh, so it's something to think about. Thank you. Yeah. That's something that I hadn't heard before you mentioned it, so that's cool Yeah, well, I mentioned it, I showed it to Doug, and he was not aware of it. They're right here in Grand Rapids on Monroe. So um, anyway, something to think about, but I'm excited about it, <laughs> and especially after what you've been talking about, because I'm going to get the gal from Kalamazoo on our website. Yeah, as a that's way a bird to one for you. That wouldn't work for my group. You know, no, that's a unique opportunity that your sense. Yeah, I got a gal in Muskegon. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep going, though. We've got, uh, don't over avoid, or avoid overusing content created by other people. It's okay to share something that you love, but don't make your identity everybody else's stuff, because then people won't know what you are. So try to at least establish who you are so when people see it, They'll be able to relate to it and understand that that's you and not some other group. Um, only use flattering content. Avoid hurting someone's feelings with a bad pic or video. You know, if you need to cut them out because they were like, you know, making a very weird face, you know, save that person the embarrassment. You're trying to do good. You're not trying to hurt people's feelings. And especially when you're first starting off, your audience is going to be your own people. So if you use a video of them and they're very flat, or they missed a cutoff, or they were coughing the whole time, maybe don't use that. But use your discretion and talk to people about what, what works and what doesn't. Um, keep your videos and photos organized so you can access them later. I often go back to something from two, three, four years ago, uh, depending on what's going on. Um, perfect example, somebody will pass away, one of our chapter members, and the family will reach out and say, do you have any photos or videos? And I've got everything so organized that I can make a video of that person within five minutes of 70, 80 pictures and videos that they're in, because the automation on this kind of stuff's amazing. And I can send that to them and they'll go, I've never seen any of these before. And it's one of those things that just like, why do we do what we do as barbershoppers if not touch people's lives? And when somebody's lost, you know, a family member, and you're able to share that stuff with them, they never forget it. Um, I usually post it as a private YouTube video and I just send them the link and then they can share it with whoever they want, but it's not just out there for the world to see. And I notice it starts off with five views, then it's 50, then it's 100, then it's 150. And that's the family members going and watching that. And it's all of the barbershopper stuff, especially with these people that spend you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years <coughs> being barbershoppers. You know, what a great way to honor them. And then you don't have to dig through hundreds of photos and videos later on. So that's just one way. Another way is to say, like, what did we do last year? If you've got a, an album, or if your phone ke keeps everything organized by month and date, then it's a very easy way to say it. Um, edit content, not tons of editing. Maybe when you get later, you'll want to do tons of editing, but just edit the stuff off the beginning. Maybe it's you blowing the pitch, the chorus taking the pitch. Cut it to the part where you start singing. Nobody cares about that stuff at the beginning. Just get to the part so you don't lose people in this part, getting to the good stuff where it starts right here. Um, get general permission, we talked about that. Try not to post more than once a day on certain platforms. There are algorithms that work in the background. Each one is unique. This is a beginner class, post whatever you want. You'll figure out the algorithms later, I can talk to you about it. Um, make events for everything you do, talked about that. Promoting with money, if you can target audiences. Uh, and if you're gonna have an event, Get it out there early. Don't put it up a week out. Put it out a month early, a month and a half early. And then start promoting it as it gets closer by spreading that link out, by sharing it with individual members. But I've got a whole thing on that. Uh, and tag your singers in your photos because that ends up spreading the audience as well. These are things that you can go and download right now. Pixar. I've been using Pixar for years. It's a really helpful image tool that you can... Let's say you wanted to take a picture of your chorus and you want to put a logo on it. Pixar is really good at that. There's all kinds of other things that Pixar does, but that's the one that I recommend the most. My favorite video editor right now, because it always changes, right now it's CapCut. It's free. It's generally user-friendly, although there's some nuances. You need to go into a video and say, this is what I want to do, then figure out how to do it. And then you'll learn things along the way by making happy little accidents and other things, but you'll learn how to use it. Uh, Canva, you want to talk about Canva? Yeah, that's what I use for, you 
rivers on the Pictou page and you see something pretty, it's one camera. But it's, it's really easy to, to use, and I don't even make half of it. I just kind of search for something, and then I change the words. I think the word she's missing is templates. Templates, yes, that's templates. So if you're not a creative person, Canva is a wonderful place to steal a template, add in your own words, and create something pretty. Or not even pretty, something cool. Or it could be pretty and cool. But there's all kinds of different templates for that kind of stuff. And that stuff's free as well. And Canva also creates QR codes. There is a version of Canva for nonprofits. Hey, didn't know that. Cool. I did not know that. Thank you. Uh, if you have an iPhone, you have iMovie, and there's video editing available on that, which is something cool. If you don't, don't worry about it. And then I use, when I make memes, like the ones you saw before, I use Mematic. It's just an app. And then I save the photo to my video, or save the photo to my photos, and then I crop it and remove their watermark. So if you need help down the line, that's what I look like on Facebook. Feel free to add me, send me a messenger. That's my email. That's my phone number. I take texts, I take phone calls, I'm happy to help. I've helped. Raise your hand if you've been helped by me before. Okay, so the handful of you, I'm happy to do it. Just talk to me about what your idea is. I'm not gonna read, I'm not gonna write your whole social media for you, but I'll help you with an idea or I'll help you with a strategy for say we've got a Christmas concert coming up and it's September. What, do, what should we do to get this thing off the ground? How do we get it out? I'll help you with that. But don't call me and say, like, for Christmas concerts in a week, what should I do? I'm like, you're on your own. Like, right. you got to give me a little bit of time. Uh, and I'm generally available at, like, 9 p.m. or later. So don't be surprised if you say, can you help me? And I go, yeah, can I call you at 10 o'clock? Like, I'm not calling you before my kids go to bed. So I'm usually waiting until everybody's asleep and then I'm happy to help. Oh, if it's something specific for, you can contact me for help too, I don't want to screw that up there at all. No. Contact Eddie, absolutely, he's awesome. Um, feel free to contact me for any kind of social media stuff as well, especially if it's specific to the district. If you want something shared on our district page, on our website, on our calendar, on our Instagram, just message me, whether you have something already created yourself or you want to say, hey, can you help me create a digital poster for this event? Here's the details, go do it. I created this PowerPoint, not even PowerPoint, but I created this presentation and then she edited it. And her edits, I wish I could show you what they look like. She went through each one and gave me do 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 do. She's passionate about helping people. So don't be afraid to use her as a resource. I think she would take that as a compliment that you trust her to help. And if you say, hey, I don't know how to use it on Canva, but you mentioned it, I think she'd be happy to just show you a trick or two on Canva the next time you're like, oh, I got this, and learn what you can along the way. At the very end of this presentation, I'm not going through it right now, but if you're using Facebook on your phone and you already have a Facebook page for your group, these are detailed instructions on how to share to all of your friends. And if you're on a computer, it's a little bit different how to do that. So that's on this presentation. That's something that you could take my process right here and write it yourself for what you have. So it's not a picture of the Harmony Town course on there, but it could be your course. And then you can just kind of take it and and then send that to your people and say, hey, everybody, by next week, I need everybody to share a Facebook page. And then watch as things start growing. And then you start creating content. People start sharing. And then we as groups all start liking and following each other. And then watch this movement. You know, keep going and, and pioneer district. It's totally within our power. No one else is doing classes like this for social media in their district. Like, we're doing it because we think it's really important. And again, I've seen success. And we're at two minutes till 3.30, so this is perfect. But I've seen success here in relative terms. We've grown our membership. When I started, the guys in my course told me exactly this. We were at the point where we figured it's us until we all start dying off. And then our course is just going to be smaller and smaller. And if you feel like that, this can help you. It, it helped us. And they said, we cannot believe it. This is what they did. I came up and said, I want to have a month of guest nights. And they go, what do you mean a month? I go, every Tuesday in June, I want to have a guest night. Every single one of them. And they're like, okay. I said, you said that recruiting is extremely important. Let's prove it. Let's make this a focus. We got 10 members from those. And we had 15 or 16 people visit. And the guys looked at me and said, we didn't think this was possible. We thought it was dead. I said, no, you just tried all the old ideas to death and you didn't try any new ones. 
These new ideas, they've worked, they've continued to work for us for years now. In our chapter, if everybody shows up, we're at 37. And when I joined, it was 21. And we've had a lot of people die. And I'm not kidding. We've had a lot of people pass away. We're getting new people that have joined. He just joined us in January. He's here at convention. That's pretty cool. Turns out, he loves singing. And he found us because he loves singing. We were there to be found. And that's a pretty cool thing. So if you have questions, please let me know. It is 3.30, and I have another class to teach. Thank you, Thank you all.